Good day. Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be showing a routine on how to on how to code um the solar battery charger basically. Um so essentially what a solar battery charger is different from a regular battery charger is basically the the fact that it's coming from a solar panel and essentially this code is going to include a solar charge controller and a battery charger so um with regards to this there are several ways to actually do this it could actually be done from one converter for example it could be done from a buck or from a chick a chick converter i mean both the solar charge controller mppt solar charge control feature and the charging could be done on one converter but it's proven to be quite complicated to do that well for me anyway it's quite complicated for me to do that so um the other way to do it is to use a two-stage converter so a boost first and then a buck um they could both be bucks buck converters obviously but um to sort of give more a wider range of voltages it's better to use a wider range of charge voltage or charge current it's better to use uh, a boost and then a buck, right? And um, yeah, so for this system, there's essentially um, two separate sections, which is the charge controller and the, and the battery charging. But um, so this is what the hardware will look like. Obviously, in this video, only simulations will be showed. But the... But the main part about it is essentially how to go about coding it, you know, the procedure um, to sort of follow, you know, the more like the the algorithm, how one would go about it. That's the main purpose. And um, I'm simulating this using a PIC24 FJ64 GA002 available in Proteus. Um, it's proven to be quite robust in a weird kind of way. Obviously, um, you could get... Um, better performance with a DSPIC or um, a more advanced mic controller but this this controller is good enough anyway you have first a, a boost converter there and then the second stage you have a buck right and um, for the solar charge controller um, you have a current sensor and um, a voltage sensor on the input of the boost and for the battery charging feature you have the current sensor and uh, voltage sensor on the output measuring down the voltage the battery all right so that's the second part okay um yeah so that's it that's it for the hardware and here is a i guess uh what do you call it a, a, a solar panel this is a solar panel well this is a simulated solar panel it's basically just a current source and a diode so this is essentially the short circuit current obviously and uh, series resistance, very small series resistance. It's almost ideal, the solar panel. So um, this is essentially just to give, you know, so so we could test um, MPPT charge controller feature on, on this. It couldn't really be done. It can't really be done with just look like just a fixed voltage or fixed current source. It's better to have something like this that actually changes its voltage and current like a solar panel would, you know. And um, yeah, so that's about it and that's the solar panel and that's the those are the converters obviously driving for everything but this is just essentially this is just a simulation to be honest all right that's it um, now I'm just gonna get into the other aspect it's just the code um, so so this is the code um, and so obviously the initialization in the code is in two parts. The first part is for the solar charge controller, MPPT solar charge controller, and the second part is for the battery. No, oh, sorry. The first part is for the battery charge, and the second part is for the um, MPPT solar charge controller. So these are the variables required for the battery. The charge voltage initialized to 20, to, to 20. And the V charge max, this variable is required for the 
because the method being used to charge the battery is um, double loop control method which is quite effective um, so this is the recharge max for that value this is the charge current so I set up the charge current to be 6.5 um, so I'm just going to change that to 6.8 and I'm actually going to simulate now because it takes quite a while to actually complete um, the simulation so I'm just going to start it up so to explain the rest of the code by the time I'm done explaining it should be done I'm um, simulating and I'm just do uh, that um, just make sure it's run and uh, all right so now I can run it space all right start it so now I just explained the code, the rest of the code. So that's the charge current. And this two variable, um, actually these three variables here um, has more to do with sort of um, the battery the battery charge percentage. It has more to do with that than um, actually the actually the rest of the code. Here in this example, I sort of want to focus on the MPPT charge controller and constant current. Or constant voltage whatever you choose on the on the other side on the buck converter this is what i want to focus on whilst this is sort of like a, it's more like sort of to determine the actual charge percentage right all right so now and this i out is basically for the measured output current measured output voltage and this control signal is essentially um initial initializing the the, the control this actually does not belong here it belongs to the to the um, to this side yeah it belongs down here with the mppt charge um and here so you have that and this is the error array for the voltage error array for the voltage output pid output array it's more like a pi controller because there's no derivative component in this example anyway this is a current error um error current error array um output current um output array and this is the loop count this is the count um for the inner loop so in this case the inner loop is the current i'm um, sorry the outer loop is the current the inner loop is the voltage so it's also the other way around there's a there's a reason for that in in battery charging or for this example anyway and this is for the charge loop count so um everything is in one single interrupt that occurs every 300 microseconds so basically um the chart the charging is not is not going to be happening every 300 microseconds right each each pid loop is not going to be happening every 300 microseconds it, it has to the frequency of the how do I say the control loop frequency of the of the charging of the charging of this particular system of the battery in this case has to be much less than the control loop frequency for the MPPT charge controllers. That makes sense. So, like, let's say the the frequency, the control loop frequency for the charge um, MP, MPPT charge controller is uh, I don't know. Let's say three kilohertz right let's say it's three kilohertz then the control loop frequency of the charging has to be less than that it has to be like 10 times less than that maybe 300 hertz that's quite small but it's conservative so it has to be this it has to be as such right so that's the purpose of this count so what this means basically is um the control the the time between um changing the control for the mppt right is is a lot smaller than the time for the charging right so in terms of timer interrupts so timer interrupt is 300 microseconds what does that mean it means every 300 microseconds the duty cycle is changing for the mppt charge controller but the duty cycle for the battery charging right is not happening every 300 microseconds it's actually happening every three milliseconds in this particular example right so that's the purpose of this charge loop count 
to actually modify this value so sometimes my one three milliseconds sometimes four so it would increase um this value well it will make more sense in the interrupt interrupt part all right so that's for that part and the next is the is for the mppt charge controller it's just normal the normal stuff input to current the previous current which is required to calculate the delta i the change in current and same for for the input voltage previous voltage delta voltage delta v same for the power input power the previous power and the change in power delta p and the control is for the initial dt cycle so initially it's 10 percent the initial dt cycle is 10 percent 10% DT cycle 10% DT cycle and this is 0 0.1 um, for 10% DT cycle because the maximum is 1 representing 100% so in um, for charge controllers I find that it works best when you just initialize this way initialize the DT cycle to some value um, like a starting off point uh, in essence and now to the so this is the um, interrupt where everything happens but it's been split up into functions because it's quite long so it's better to have it in, in functions as such so there are two different types of charge controllers been been used here well in terms of options right so the first one is the incremental conductance algorithm second is the perturbant observe obviously you can only use one at a time so that's why I um, how do you say that's why I, I commented the IC one out incremental conductance so I'm going to use the PNO first and the second um, function is the battery charger so just go into the MPPTPO routine so first off obviously current um, the sensor sampling so the VN I think I should zoom into this make it more visible um, all right, so the P, so the to calculate for the VN, um, so this value is the VREF, five volts is the VREF. This is the highest amount of uh, the, this is the highest value for the ADC one zero two three, which is two to the power of ten minus one, and this is the buffer ADC one BUF zero, and um, yeah, so that's the value. So this first part is to get the actual voltage being sensed. Um, to get the value of the actual voltage and this line is to sort of scale it up um, so this right here is the big um, the bigger resistor plus the smaller resistor divided by the value for the smaller resistor so in this case it's 1200k we're using 1200k in this example 100k is the smaller one so that's what's being used here but when you work everything out when you work everything out the value Final value comes down to this 0 0.06353861193. All right, and uh, this is ADC buff zero. And essentially, I just used this one line because um, for um, to save CPUs um, um, space essentially to to have this happen much faster than having to do it twice like that and exact same thing is for the current exact same thing is for the current um let me just check there all right so let me just delete that that's not part of it so the same thing for the current first step get the actual voltage and the next step actually do this so this is a whole effect sensor with an offset of 2.5 that's why it's 2.5 here and this represents 100 millivolts to 0 0.1 100 millivolts per amp but when you work everything out to save time you get this value down here and that's where the sensor stuff ends all right so this is where the um charge controller basically starts the actual algorithm it's a perturb and observe this particular one so first you have to compute the actual pn and then get the delta p and then get the delta v and this and this particular stuff here, um, 
it, it's gonna make a lot more sense if you simply look at the the flow diagram so this is the flow diagram it's just an if statement when, when you see like a, I don't know what this is I think is a trapezoid or something I, I don't know what this the, the I forgot the name of the shape think of it like a weird looking square like a skew square I, I don't know but anyway this particular shape um, essentially means an if statement once you see that in like a, a, a code flow diagram it means an if statement so you just do an if statement for the, for this which is delta p greater than zero and then if yes there else this is the else statement and then else you have another if statement which is delta p greater than zero and then if yes or uh, else this is the else part and this IMPPT MPPT K plus one this essentially means just increase the duty cycle because it says increase the IM, IMPPT current set point which basically just means increase the duty cycle and that's what and that's what this means so you can just follow that and it's it's literally um, I literally just plagiarized this freaking um, in terms of coding wise I mean coding wise like in terms of like copying this particular flow diagram straight into the code as like no change whatsoever so that's exactly what it is you see the if statement and then there's an if statement in there um, and then the else there um, yeah so it's, it's essentially just this I don't I don't really know how to how, how else to to state that but um, that's that's literally what it is and um, here this is the increment all right so this part I do have to talk about this part is the main part actually this is where you're actually increasing and decreasing the, the PWM so as you can see here we're increasing by one two by one percent PWMs each time so if you let's say made this to be zero you added zero which means we're increasing by 0 0.1 PWM um, 0 0.1 percent of the PWM and which means there will be less um, ripple there will be less fluctuations um, around the actual power point you know cause we're, we're going much slower right the the step the PWM step is much much less so there's going to be less ripple around the actual power point but it's also important to note that if you do that then it's going to take more time so you sort of have to um, how do you say you sort of have to balance the two and, and make a and make a trade-off and make a trade-off between the two between time and accuracy when it's there so it all depends on what, how much time you actually need or um, you could make the zero and start off with a higher duty cycle if you see this full sun sunlight outside and you can just you can just start with a higher duty cycle even if there's no full sunlight you could start at a higher duty cycle although that's risky because you could wind up just killing the algorithm completely because if you go too high on the initial duty cycle like let's say you went like 0 0.8 or some some crazy like that it will literally just go to zero like solar panels or weird like that it will literally just go to zero and like stay there for, for some some reason so you sort of want to start with something um, conservative like 0 0.1 or even less to be honest um, but obviously you have to take into account it's gonna take some time to actually get there and obviously this code is in a is in a file custom custom that see it actually is not generated with it it's one um, file that was created um, I create I created this file just to have the code like you know in a more tidier sort of way more readable anyway so that's the this is the main PI I'm sorry the main MPPG charging and it follows the most important thing is it follows this diagram it must always follow the diagram so you can trace your way back because this is basically just a bunch of if statements you're not really gonna get anything from this it's just it's literally following this blueprint um all right so so that's that but I left it to one change every one percent cause I, I prefer speed to the accuracy when it does get there um, in this particular example anyway it's good, taking a long time to actually get there because I'm simulating this particular example alright so and after that obviously you have to limit the duty cycle 
control control max if it's greater or equal to control max you make it the equals is actually redundant in this case but anyway so um, you make it control max and if it's less than uh, control minimum that you set then you equate that to that this is part here is basically limiting your duty cycle and if it's not higher than or lower than the minimum you just make it equal to itself right you just leave it as is um so this is essentially where you change the control max and control in i've gone quite high on the control max 0 0.85 usually in um nice conditions you don't even have to go this high to actually get the maximum power point probably at 0.6 you did get there around that point 60% each cycle because remember this is a boost converter if you were using a buck then you might want to stay high on it um, get as much power in as possible but this is a boost that a certain point it kind of starts to go weird and it's obviously more complicated if you're using a chuk converter to do this to actually get to the maximum power point in that case your algorithm has to be really really solid because um, the chuk obviously um, you could have the output higher or lower than the input, which is interesting, but you know, it makes control, it makes um, coding an MPPT charge controller with it quite interesting. All right, so that's that. So that's this, so that's that basically for the perturb and observe, and then after that, you have to update the parameters for the next cycle. So v pre previous is going to be v equals to vn p previous pn i previous in doesn't really matter what order you put it in as long as it's done all right so that's for the perturb and observe now i want to go to the incremental conductance same same so this is an incremental conductance routine everything's the same like the sensor sampling stuff everything stays the same um most importantly for the voltage, keep in mind these two values, the most important. So this is, once again, the big resistor, this is the small resistor, right? And this as well, remember, this is VRF is 5 for this particular microcontroller. Actually, it's 3.3, but in the approaches environment, it's 5 for some reason. And um, the, the ADC resolution is 10 bits, that's why this is 1023. On most DSPICs, this guy is like 3.3 .3 and this is 4096 because 12 bit resolution and 3.3 volts um, VREF. So you have to adjust all that accordingly based on your actual values. Same for the current. If you're using a 30 amp current sensor, just tick that out. Um, you have to change the 0 0.1 to 0 0.066, 66 millivolts per amps. If you're using a 5 amp sensor, you adjust accordingly, obviously and um yeah so that's about it and if you're using a shunt then you're gonna be using more loop that uh, sorry um calculations that look more like this you know not like this because remember this is a whole effect and it has a offset anyway the sensor stuff stays the same for incremental con conductance obviously but then this is where um it kind of differs so first you calculate the input power and then in this case you have to calculate the delta i delta v and delta p so that's where it varies from the actual from the other one which is the perturbant observe you only need delta v and delta p in in this particular method of doing it anyway i guess there's some perturbant observes maybe you require um delta i but for this one no delta i is needed but in this in incremental conductance most of the time you always require delta i delta v delta p same same um delta b delta p same as the other delta i is the new one that's added and now this is where i kind of have to go back to the to the all uh, right so, the, so this is for the incremental conductance so this i found in a in a paper i'll link it below to it's, it's a nice read on um mppt um charge controller algorithms um so anyway so this is the also the flow diagram for incremental conductance obviously it's more so you read the vpv read the um, iv and then you um check the delta v if the delta v is zero then you go to this loop if it's not then you go here so basically it's if if yes there else this is the else part and the else part you do it you do this this part um you check so essentially what the incremental conductance 
does is it checks the rate of change it does it just doesn't change change and check what what it's getting so theoretically there should not be oscillations with um the incremental conductance it should find a power point and just and just stay there I said theoretically it should be that way but from my experience that kind of oscillates a bit but that's essentially what you get right so um, that's like the code that's there below um, that's in the, this particular code um, like I said it's um it's just a bunch of if and else statements that literally means nothing if you don't understand this this is the main stuff to sort of wrap your head around and um, also one major part that's different from the perturbing observe right so let's go for a scenario where everything's perfect so delta v is equals to zero yes fine jump here and check delta v if delta v is equals to zero and delta i is equals to zero it means that it's, it's at the maximum power point right so if you look at like an um uh how do you say it uh an IV curve or a PV curve right so at the maximum power point the rate of change if it's small enough if the rate of change is small enough I'm um, sorry the sampling time is small enough the 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 amount of change of the voltage and current with, within that time should be zero right it should be zero at the maximum power point because it's like sort of the the maximum point so there's no change happening there at the maximum point it's just zero though the rate of change is zero at the maximum point that's what the incremental conductance algorithm sort of takes advantage of and so if that's yes if delta v is equals to zero yes if delta i is equals to zero yes then we go down there and leave it as is so let me show you what i mean so delta v is equals to zero yes delta i is equals to zero control equal to control nothing changes the duty cycle stays constant right else if the delta v is um, else in the sense if delta v is equal to zero and delta i and delta i is not equal to zero we're not at the maximum power point now we have to check if delta i um, the rate of change is increasing or decreasing if it, the rate of change is increasing delta i is greater than 0, 0.0 great reduce reduce the, the control now this is one Part that I noticed that this particular um, flow diagram kind of got wrong because I checked it for both cases and um, it does not work for this exact one so when it says delta V equals to zero great delta I is equals to zero if delta I is equals to zero no so it goes here and then checks is delta I greater than zero or less than zero so when I say delta I greater than zero here it states to increase the duty cycle which is wrong um apparently it's not supposed to do that so we actually the other way around it's supposed to reduce the duty cycle when this is the case um if you don't believe me try it yourself and see the magic that happens all right so delta i greater than zero um and no um if it's no then it's um you add it so it's sort of the other way around but otherwise this flow diagram is all right but just the incremental conductance part you kind of have to flip everything over but the perturbant observe everything was tipped up all right so um so that's that I'm trying to get back to all right so that's what this flow diagram is for yes i forgot to talk about this so let me just go back to the images yes um so if the delta v is not equals to zero at all then it basically means you're not even close to the power point right so the maximum power point so it's that's that's no and then you have to go in here and check um the rate of change of the current divided by the rate of change of the voltage is it equals to minus the rate of change of the current and the rate of change of the voltage um, no not the rate um, just the actual um, current divided by the actual voltage so there's a mathematical law that states this I think the paper talks about it I, I really don't want to get into that there's a mathematical law that states this in terms of curves right remember it's all about just getting to the maximum so this is basically a maximum um, finding algorithm 
right? There are more interesting ones out there, but do 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 take a look at that paper. Um, I'm I'm guessing if you, to be honest, I, I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you probably already know a bunch of stuff about this. So this is basically just talking about the code, actually focusing about the code uh, on how you'd go about coding it. Um, so that's that. So if it's equals, um, then yes. If that's yes, then you don't have to change it, right? And I have to change it, right? But if no then you have to check if it's greater than yes no um, yeah uh, um, I'm a fan of flow diagrams you just follow them exactly and yeah and so that's what this um, code is essentially just uh, following the flow diagram and then after that and then after that you just um, limit the duty cycle duty cycle is limited and um, yeah, that's about it. Um, as usual, the duty cycle is limited to 0 0.85. And finally, obviously, um, cause the, the this code is done in such a way where the maximum duty cycle is 1.0. 1.0 represents 100% duty cycle, but that has to be scaled to this particular microcontroller to the max duty of this particular microcontroller, which is 159. Right? For the switching frequency is 10. Is 100 kilohertz and that period is 10 microseconds so right so for that the max duty is 159 and the control 0 0.8 okay I think I made a mistake here I said if this is not equals to 0 then it's not close that's wrong that's wrong actually um, that's not the case um, it's still it still works out. Um, do do read the uh, do read the article to to get more understanding about this. I don't want to confuse about um, MPPT charge algorithms. I'm simply focusing on the the coding coding aspect in this video. So do do check out the paper for all the other theoretical theoretical stuff and explanation in depth um, about the uh, about the algorithms and what they originate from. Um, all right, so so this is for the PWM for the OC1 RS and uh, max duty. And the reason for doing it this way is in in the case of taking this from from this pick to another pick, or um, potentially an STM. I have come to understand that the Texas has quite an interesting way of doing things. Some of them do not support floating point. Um, values so you sort of have to use a bunch of libraries to, to do that to do the floating point stuff um, but if you were to use a DSPIC or an STM um, this this will be will come in handy obviously the STM has a different register to actually do this I think it does it in a more interesting efficient way actually um, but this is the PWM re register for this particular pick and as usual update for the next cycle so that's the incremental conductance and that was the perturbant observed so that's the that's the main thing to note so the main aspect of an MPPT routine is basically the sensors sensors are important no sensing no uh, maximum power point absolutely not so the first part is the sense sensing sensing correctly and doing the initial parts and and just following the flow diagram right and then just following it literally to the letter and that's it and um, the next part is the battery charger so same thing for the battery charger um, first off the sensor stuff I use the exact same sensors for the the buck converter that I used for the boost exact same resistor ratios everything stays the same obviously the only part that changes the ADC so there's um in this particular example there's um um auto auto sampling there's auto sampling enabled so it automatically samples the ADC and throws all the results in ADC one buff zero to ADC one buff three in that order just like this ADC AN zero AN one AN two AN three so this is this has the voltage input voltage input current output voltage output current so that's why it says ADC1 buff 2 here for the output voltage 
So after that, remember I talked about a charge loop count where the frequency of the charge in is um, much less than the frequency of the MPPT charge. Sorry, MPPT, yes, MPPT charge controller algorithm. So that's what this is for. So so um, that the charging does not affect um, settling time for the, does not affect the, the MPPT charging, right? MPPT algorithm. So that the charging does not affect that algorithm. That's why the frequency here has to be much less. So to do that, well, basically this occurs 10 times less. 10 times less than the charge algorithm occurs. So that's what the charge loop count does. So this um, CH loop count. And once, um, if, once it's equals to 10, then the charge loop commences. And in this case, as opposed to an average current mode control, so in an average current mode controlled system, um, the inner loop, the inner faster loop is the current loop and the outer slower loop is the voltage. This is sort of the opposite opposite to that and I'll explain why just now in this case anyway in this particular example it's the opposite um, so so this is the inner loop the voltage obviously this is just um, this is just um, how uh, uh, so this is how you'd go about doing a PID um, loop for uh, for uh, how do you say it uh, a PID control loop. This is this is basically at first you have to um, the previous P previous input goes to the new input, and the previous previous error to the previous error, previous error to the current error, right? And then computing the error V charge minus V out, and that's how you do that. Then the output of this, the output of this is what goes to the PWM actual output PWM signal. And before you do that, you limit the duty cycle. Um, the control max for this also is 0 0.85. Right, so 0 0.85 OCTR is max duty as usual. Right, and then for the much slower outer loop, the much slower outer loop, which is the current loop, is this and take note of the fact that um, the this particular V charge is obtained from the outer loop so this is the charge this is the um, control control algorithm for the for the outer loop for the outer loop which is the current in this case and you can see the outer loop 10 times slower what the outer loop 10 times slower than the inner loop. Right. And um, that's what you get. And obviously, limiting, limiting the output to 1.0. And then in this case, um, the V charge, the V charge is the V charge max multiplied by this value here by the output, by the PID um, control output, right, which is this, right, and basically what's happening here is, um, instead of controlling the, the current directly, most batteries have maximum charge voltages, right, so this basically limits that, right, so essentially we're controlling the charge voltage um, by in a way, we're doing both, right? We're basically charging, charging it um, um, with uh, constant current, but ensuring that the voltage isn't above a certain value, which, which is what this does. So the V charge max in this case, I set it up to be 20.0. So the maximum value for V charge is going to be 20, right? So this outer loop um, makes up the set point for the inner loop. And that's essentially how we go go about charging it, right? So this is um, um, yeah. So this is essentially how that goes. Yeah. So this is the battery charging part. Um, I'm just explaining quickly again. So first off, this is the inner loop. 
this is the PID step I, I put a link that sort of explains how one arrives at this so this is a velocity uh, velocity mode PID control equation and this is the duty cycle limiting of the duty cycle part and this is OC2 RS um, actually put in um, the, for the duty cycle because remember the maximum here is one and you have to sort of scale that up to for this particular controller so this value for this controller is 159.0 because it's 10 microseconds um, the sorry it's 100 kilohertz yes 10 microseconds the PWM period um, so that's that and then in this case for the inner loop right so this is the I loop count oh sorry I said inner loop for the outer loop right so this is the outer loop remember this is in inside the battery charger this is separate from the other loop right this is inside the battery charger it has double loop basically so the inner loop is the voltage the outer loop is for the current and what the inner loop um sorry the the, it, the inner loop just basically exists to sort of to sort of limit um the voltage oh. and um the reason the reason I'm doing it this way is cause in the case in the situation where um where you're using um a, a, a buck a buck sorry a boost converter for charging you can't necessarily use average current mode control because the inductor the current going through the inductor current is different from the current going outside they're actually different they're not the same um and you can obviously use that if you're if your battery if you're charging your battery with a buck converter you could use average current mode control directly right because the current going through the inductor is same as the current going to, through the output pretty much the same right but for like a universe universal approach um generally it's 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 not that way if you're going to use a boost converter or some sort of other type of converted topology um it's not always the case where the inductor current is the same as the output current so in this case that's why um i did it such that in this particular example anyway i did it such that the voltage is the is the faster loop fast loop and uh, and the current is the slower loop in in that sense the, the the charge voltage is is automatically limited intrinsically it's just limited right um and you still get constant current and if the constant current um, is too much once you go over a certain i guess threshold then it will be limited so that's what that's what this does and in terms of this um pid control um routine it's 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 just standard right it's just standard in that document it sort of explains how we come about velocity mode control i prefer velocity mode control um much better than the position form because the position form kind of just goes sort of crazy at times so i prefer this method to actually accomplish this all right so that's that um yeah and this is the limiting part and um the v charge max and the v charge so obviously if you wanted to change the the maximum charge and you just go to the main and change the v charge max maybe you want to be to 24 um 25 volts for a 24 volts battery then you'd you would change this here all right so that's about it um yeah so that's about it for a solar battery charger and um yeah so let me just take a look at it um so it's done simulating the set point i believe is 6.8 for the current all right so as you can see there it's not perfect obviously um 6.8 fluctuates between 6.8 and 6.7 it's important to note that there's a charge controller in the first stage so that's why it kind of fluctuates between these two values it's not super stable but um yeah it's it's it obviously this could be improved a lot upon um there's a lot to improve on with this particular way of doing things but this way does does i have some sort of functionality does function and gets to the set point oscillates quite a bit but does does get there and uh, um the way it goes up and down is 
is sort of normal in the sense of it's coming from a from a solar panel, not not like um, a wall socket with like a stable power. Remember the the charge controller is constantly trying to find the charge and due to cycles changing over there, and the input input voltage is constantly changing. Um, so that's why it sort of looks like this. And obviously, um, the main part of the PI control loops is the is the coefficient. And up here, I just put a couple of notes um, to explain to explain that on how you'd go about that. So you just go through that. To, basically general thumb sucked tuning rule to be honest um, and always start with this that's maybe I should put that at the top actually um, always start with this super slow but works all right so that's about it and also yeah before I go um, just close that all right so for the actual charge controller so I checked myself, right? So the so the maximum power point for this uh, solar panel, I guess, or like simulated um, circuit that pretends like it's a solar panel. So essentially, the maximum power I got was 147 um, watts um, from it. Um, the maximum power that that will produce. So that's sort of the the goal here. So I'm just gonna add one. A trace for the power so I can get the power coming out of the simulated panel um, and to see if, if the circuit actually gets to that point a charge point um, so I've disconnected the second stage, the second stage which is the battery charging um, stage and this happens a lot faster so I'll just change that to 100 milliseconds and um, yeah so 10 ohm on the output there and if I go back let's just go back to the code here I'm just gonna disable the battery charging because that's not needed right now just the PNO routine for the charge controller to actually see if it uh, gets to the maximum power point so I'm just gonna run that And they will be able to see the sort of power curve. It actually settles relatively quickly. Alright, so this is going to take a while. Um, and yeah, so, so that's that for a solar battery charger. Like I said, um, so it could be done on one converter. Obviously, that's great for efficiency wise and everything, but the main. Um, the major way to do that but I find when I do it on one converter it's easier to do that on one converter if the converters are a boost converter than if it's a buck and you, it could actually be done with two sensors so if you decide to put the sensors on the output if you decide to put the sensors on the output instead of the input that's actually great and I know you don't necessarily get um, how do you say it uh, the output capacitor then matters or the size of the output capacitor um, but it, it can be done it's easier with like a, a, a boost than it is with a, with a buck from my experience and um, yeah it could it could be done and in that sense you sort of are able to increase the efficiency of your charge controller system less components are required and that's great if you are able to do it and also what I wanted to say, in terms of this diagram, you sort of have to flip this over. Well, you kind of have to not necessarily just flip it over. You sort of have to work work it out. So for this particular part here, like you have to look here, right? So delta V, delta V greater than zero. Yeah, but that's for the solar panel. What's actually, what's actually happening on the output? You have to think about it that way, right? If you were to put your sensors on the output for like a one stage system, a one stage solar battery charging system, right? You'd have to put your sensors on the output voltage and current. And to actually use the charge controller um, routine, you kind of have to ask yourself, okay, this is happening, but that's on the input, right? 
what's what's happening on the output in this particular scenario and now determine whether you actually increase or decrease your PWM because that's what happens in the end anyway you either increase or decrease your PWM so what's happening on the input what versus what's happening in the output and this particular stuff sort of varies with by converter with the boost is different from the back is different with the chuck is different with the flyback you know it's, it's different you kind of have to look at it from converted to converter which makes it more complicated um control design wise um algorithm design wise in essence in the coding wise but obviously you save a lot of space and and money in terms of components that you have to buy but it takes a lot more time to sort of negotiate like what what, what is it what what is actually happening you know to sort of find that out and it's not as easy as just flipping them over i tried that it, it doesn't work out when you do that just flipping everything over um, you sort of have to look what is actually happening, you know, in, with this particular converter. Um, what happens when the voltage, the input voltage, what happens to the output voltage relative to the input voltage as it increases, decrease. Same with the current in terms of the incremental conductance algorithm. And, and that's how you do that. But for safety, just just use two, two stages and eat the, you know, eat the losses, I guess. Um, so yeah, so there it is, it does settle at 147, yeah, so then 147 the maximum power point, but obviously, as you can see, the vicious dips, like there's a dip over there, crazy ass dip over there, on there it goes, I think, I think it goes all the way down to the dip, there it goes all the way down to 138, so there's like a 10 watt, 10 watt ripple in the power i don't know how how comfortable you are you are with that but but that's that's what the case is 10 watt ripple i guess you could um change the weight it is um from 0, 0.0 from 0. Point, um in this particular example it's it's 0 0.01 you can make it 0 0.01 if you please i prefer to just leave it here Obviously, in your um, hardware systems, um, you want to experiment a little bit to get them much faster, which makes much less ripple, try to find a better point. But in this example, I'm kind of cool with this. All right, so for the incremental conductance, to be honest, they look the same. They look absolutely the same. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on with the incremental conductance, but they look very similar to one another. Um, so I'm going to change this, because it settles pretty quickly, I'm just going to change it to 25, just to get there much quicker, because, you know, yeah. Alright, so, did I run it? Yes, I ran it. Alright, and um, also, um, actually, because this is a two-stage system, you don't have to pay too much attention to this capacitor um, value. Right, and there you go. Obviously, you see there's a weird sharp dip over there. 134, crazy. I know, but yeah, the incremental conductance is a lot more aggressive apparently. Um, yeah, but it does it does find the maximum power point, which is the most important thing. And if I, if I sort of mess with this, like I sort of ruin this, let me just change that to like one or something. Uh, the maximum power point actually changes to a smaller value, which is quite interesting. Because it acts like an actual solar panel. Yeah. That uh, happened quickly. Let's see what happens. Probably died out. Yeah. So as you can see, it's going to settle eventually, but at a much smaller value. So it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. And there you go. That's it. Um, yeah, that's about it. And also, because as you can see, if you notice, sorry about that. Because if you notice, right, if you notice, um, the, the set, getting to the set point is actually too fast I think because you know usually from the solar charge controllers I've seen like the the physical ones that you buy um 
they don't settle too quickly right so you want to take that into account maybe increase the the time for like for Taiwan like this is 300, 300 microseconds which is freaking extreme right it's kind of extreme to be honest um, you want to increase that maybe experiment maybe one milliseconds two milliseconds three milliseconds you know give it some time to actually change because um, this what I'm doing is a bit aggressive but yeah it is what it is um yeah and obviously from um, the MCC standpoint it's just clear cut ADC OC1 OC2 OC1 for the first stage OC2 for the second stage they're both using timer 2 because same switching frequency 10 microseconds and timer 1 is for the timer interrupt 300 microseconds and UART yeah and your art is basically just to keep track of of the values and I don't really need it in this particular example so so that's it um that's essentially the system and um yeah if you have any questions it's do you know serious questions about this then sure you can ask try to answer if I know the answer if I don't know the answer I probably won't answer or I would just say I don't know the answer all right so that's about it and um, all the best in your applications of this. Cheers, bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.